Hello, my most amazing artists. Today we're going to start the same way as we always do, picking up a pencil and writing our name and class code on the back of your paper. Don't forget to do that, it's super important. Then flip your paper over to the back side. You wanna make sure your name's on the other side. We're going to be making a print, kind of like a stamp, with a CD and a Q-tip. You're going to be choosing either cool or warm colors. Cools are blues, greens, and purples. The cool colors, I've got some signs in my room to show you. The warm colors are reds or pinks, yellows, and oranges. Those are like the fiery colors. You're going to choose one of those groups and then be using paint and paint brushes. Today, you wanna to make sure that your paintbrush is like a ballerina on its tippy toes. We never hold our paintbrushes by the tip of the hairs. You always wanna keep your fingers out of the danger zone. Hold our paintbrushes on that nice little pillow made for our fingers. Then you're going to dip in the water. When you dip in the water, you wanna dip. If it starts to drip, wipe it on the lip. That's the edge of the bowl. You never wanna tap, tap, tap because that gets water everywhere. So you dip, wipe on the edge, and then swipe on dirty old SpongeBob. If you swipe in an X formation, you will make sure that your paintbrush is always like a ballerina on her tippy toes, never ever scooting around on her bottom because nobody wants to go to the booty scootin' ballet. If you smash your paintbrush down while you're painting, you're gonna have to take a painting break. You always keep that paintbrush on its tippy toes, especially since we're making delicate flowers today. They require a lot of brush strokes. That means I'm doing long brush strokes around the CD, not just painting it in all one direction. I'm actually turning my paintbrush as I go around, around the CD in circles, kind of like a spiral, but making brush strokes like a flower. Now you'll notice I'm using all warm colors, but I also wash my brush in between. When I think I'm done, I'm going to turn over my CD and press it down. Now I don't lift it up until I count to 10. Once I do, I lift it up very carefully and I have an amazing print. If you would like to press down again, it's going to create something called a ghost print. It's called a ghost print because you can just barely see it. Boo. It's barely there. It's disappearing. So you might want to add some more paint before you print again with that CD. Now, if you add another color, make sure to wash your paintbrush in between. If anybody mixes the paint up in the paint tray, you will be taking a painting break. These paints are expensive and we want to keep them as nice as possible by not mixing the colors in the paint tray. Only mix them on your CD. Now remember, you can only use warm or cool colors. That means that I can't use any kinds of blues or greens or black or brown on my CD. I can only use my warm colors like my reds, my pinks, my oranges, and my yellows on here. I can print as many times as I want until my paper has enough flowers on it. If I'm not quite liking how one comes out, I can add some more petals on there and then print on top of that same area again. I can even print in the corners to just show part of a flower if I don't have room to fit a whole one. If I make a mess, it's okay. I did it on their table there. You can use an art wipe to clean your hands and your area with any messes. If you absolutely need to clean your CD because you're changing colors, you can use an art wipe or a sponge to do that. If you're done printing your flowers, you can use a Q-tip to make another print. This makes a circle shape with the Q-tip. I'm using it to add some polka dots to make a little bit of sparkle or extra texture to my painting. By adding these little white dots, it makes them look a little bit more real. I can also use my Q-tip to paint with, but I am not painting with my paintbrush on my painting today. That means I'm only using stamping or printmaking tools. I can use that Q-tip to make prints onto my paper, but I can't use the paintbrush on my paper today. I'm gonna use a clean Q-tip when I'm ready to make some leaves. So I already added those white dots to add some extra added texture to my flowers. Then I'm going to make leaves by making some art shapes, one like a rainbow arch going one way, and then one the opposite way to connect it to make a shape called an ellipse. I'm gonna add a few leaves before I call it a day and say I'm done. Now make sure you're only using warm or cool colors. I broke the rules on this one. I shouldn't have used purple. That was a cool color. So let's review the right way to do this. You're going to write your name and class code, flip your paper over, grab your CD, choose warm or cool colors. This time I'm choosing cool. Keep that paintbrush like a ballerina on its tippy toes and start adding your paint. Now remember, this kind of paint doesn't need water to make it work, so always make sure you're wiping on dirty old SpongeBob to dab your brush off and get it dry again. 
you can use a Q-tip to add some texture. In this case, I'm doing something called subtractive drawing. That means I'm taking away the paint on my CD and it leaves awesome flower petals. So I actually use a clean Q-tip to take away the paint to make that texture. It looks really awesome. I could also add it and do the opposite by using white paint to add to the, it to make some flower petals. You can add white to either warm or cool colors. It doesn't matter because it's something called a neutral color. You can add it to either one. It will make your colors lighter. So if you want to make a lighter flower, just add a little bit of white into there and when you make a print, it'll look a lot lighter. If a print doesn't come out so well or the way you wanted it, you can reprint on top of there by adding some more paint, maybe trying another method like adding some white or using the Q-tip to subtract or take away some paint in the shape of petals and then pressing it down on top of that same area, hold it for 10 seconds and lift. If you're not happy with your print then, you can always add some more texture with the Q-tips later. I'm going to print a couple more times before I say I'm done. You do still wanna have some black spots parts on your paper left. You don't want to fill the entire thing, otherwise it won't look like flowers anymore. You still want to see some of that shape before you fill it all up. When you are done with your CD, you can wipe it with a sponge or an art wipe and then put it on your painting tray. Then you can go back with a Q-tip and add any details. Like I'm going to go ahead and define some of those flower petals. I'm going to add my flowers or my leaves by using a Q-tip in the green. If I ever switch color, I have to switch the end of my Q-tip, either by turning it over or getting a clean Q-tip. Now, when we switch our paintbrushes, we wash them, but we do not wash our Q-tips. We throw those away after we use both ends. So today, please make sure that if you're going from white, doing those polka dots, to the green for the leaves, you either turn your Q-tip around to the other side or throw it out and get a new one. Today, when you're finished, we will be bringing these awesome paintings to the drying rack. They need a good place to dry. To do that, you're going to make sure that you throw away any Q-tips or art wipes, clean up your hands and area, and then we'll take it to the drying rack. Your paintbrushes always go back in the paint bowl when you're done. When you're using an art wipe, make sure to seal that bag up after you're done and never put a dirty art wipe back in the bag. Nobody wants to use that, so make sure it goes in the trash. Now your painting you want to make sure has your name before it goes to the drying rack. Now you're going to hold it like the most important pizza you ever held. That doesn't look like a pizza. I'm going to hold it flat like a pizza. That way the cheese doesn't fall off, aka the paint. If I were to only hold it with one hand, it might fall and drop on the ground. I also want to make sure never to walk on top of the carpets with a wet painting just in case it did fall on the ground. That would not be good. Then I'm going to bring it to the drying rack closest to me and face it with the paint side up, not the paint side down. That would be silly. I'm going to fill the drying rack from the bottom to the top. Now if I'm on the warm side of the room, like the red table, the orange table, or the yellow table, I'm going to go to these drying racks next to the sink because they're the closest to me. When I'm done, I can take off my apron and hang it up. Just like Miss Q doesn't tie aprons, she doesn't untie them either. So please ask a friend if you're having trouble. When you get back to your table, make sure to put the lid on your paints if everybody's done. Make sure your clean CD is cleaned off and on your tray, and then you're good to go. Make sure you don't have any puddles in your table before you take anything else out. Now don't forget to use the art wipes to clean up your hands and area, and then you can throw those wipes away in the trash can, please. Now when you're finished, you can find your sketchbook in your table folder and work in there quietly until we all finish painting. All right, awesome artists, can't wait to see what you create.